Hi gorgeous, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ara. I am a 39 year old mother of five, beauty and fitness lover. I have literally filmed multiple videos today and every single video has corrupted. So we're gonna do this one more time. This is a video about all of my top three in face category. And then in a separate video, talk about my favorite blushes, bronzers, highlighters, and lipstick. If that sounds good to you, make sure you give it a like, hit subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification bell so you know every time I upload. I'm gonna go ahead and start with primers, which is actually a primer I use in almost every single video. You guys have seen it a million times. It is the primer I am wearing today, my Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. <sighs> Where to begin? Okay, this is hands down my holy grail. I will repurchase this every single time it is empty. This will be in my collection no matter what. I cannot live without it. It is <laughs> it is my favorite of all favorites when it comes to primers. This, this primer here is the only primer that makes my forehead lines basically non-existent. I have so many different primers, but this is the only primer that doesn't settle in any of my fine lines, doesn't settle in my 11s or my, my frown lines, and it doesn't make it look cakey. This primer is the only one that I can put every single foundation over and each foundation looks smooth and flawless. On that same token, this is the actual silk canvas. This is this one that, this was the one I got originally before the silk liquid canvas or liquid silk canvas. I love this primer. It is just as good, but the only difference is, as far as foundation in my forehead, this one isn't as smooth. I prefer this one more in my T-zone, around my nose, my smile lines. I have had this makeup on for so long now, I'm not even sure how to explain how good the liquid silk is controlling my face. This one is almost just as good. I can just tell in my forehead and my 11s right here that this one settles just a little bit more. So it's not necessarily my favorite favorite, but it is definitely in my top three. And the last primer I want to talk about is my Tarte. This one is the Timeless Smoothing Primer. I have gone through many of these for a long time. I've even hit pan on this one. This is just such a a classic, a cult classic. This is a favorite. I have loved this for a long time. I do not love it for my forehead. It looks like it settles all the way across my forehead like train tracks and in my 11 C's. So it's really hard for me to get behind this for my forehead, but it is perfect for my T-zone around my nose, in my smile lines. It is so smoothing. My pores are like non-existent and I say that as someone who doesn't really have a lot of noticeable pores, but that said, this is so good. If you want to get through summer and you are sweaty, this is the primer to go for. I will use this under many foundations in the summer, especially because it's so good at controlling my oils and just making sure that nothing moves. Let's talk about illuminators because this is such, this is a category that not everybody can get behind. I don't always use illuminators, like illuminizers, whatever you want to call it. But when I do, I want them to look a certain way. I don't want them to be sparkly. I don't want them to be changing the color of my base or really noticeable, if that makes sense. The first one is my Natasha Denona High Glam, no, this is Hygiene Energizing and Hydrating Primer Serum. I cannot begin to tell you how this one, the first time I used it, I was not sure. I was like, I'm not gonna put that all over my face. I don't want it to look like I'm glowing, like bright, like a light bulb. So I wasn't totally sure and I wasn't totally on board with it. And then the more I used it, the more I loved it, the more I reached for it and I couldn't put it down. And I used it so often that I realized I actually really, really enjoy this primer serum, primer serum. Like I, sometimes I've used it alone. Sometimes I've used it over my liquid silk canvas, but this thing is just gorgeous. It looks like it has a shimmer in it, but it, it doesn't like it's, there's something about it that truly does look like a glass skin effect. And I feel like it lives up to that claim. It's not overpowering. It doesn't 
like slip off my face or cause my base to break up, this is a beautiful, beautiful luminizer. The next luminizer is my Chantecaille. This is the Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint. This, this is pricey. This is incredibly pricey. This has a very subtle pink, like rosy tint to it. It's not a bad scent, but it's not overpowering and it dissipates. It, it could dissipate quicker in my opinion, but it doesn't. It's really expensive, but it looks so good under your foundation. And then I haven't worn it on its own. I don't typically do that. I feel like I don't really want to wear luminizer by itself. I'm not that person, but under a skin tint, this looks amazing. This looks so beautiful under a skin tint. It's like the healthiest glowy, juicy skin, but like, I don't know how to describe it. It just looks amazing. I think if you were to put the money into this, you would genuinely love it, but I don't know if you would like the pink undertone. There is there is a bronzy one with a bronze undertone, so if you were a deeper skin tone, that actually might work better than this one with the pink. This last luminizer is actually one that I've had multiple samples of. This is my third sample. The second one, I lost that one. I started using that one, and then I don't remember what I did with it, so I just cracked open my last one. I got these from a couple of my Sephora orders. I don't understand why this doesn't get more hype. This is the Danessa Myricks Glow Serum in the shade Main Squeeze, or I think that's the only one. I loved it. So I didn't want to pick up the big one. So when this launched originally with the, what was that, the foundation? This one, this, I was like, no, I don't want that. I, I don't want to spend the money on a luminizer that I'm going to wear underneath the foundation. But then I got these in samples and I was like, whoa, how come this isn't a big deal? This thing, when you drop it onto your skin here, it looks like it's got a tint. But when you, when you smooth it out, like it just looks like your skin, it blends in and it's like, it's just like a healthy, glowy dew. It looks so good. So when I'm finished with this one, I'm gonna pick up a full size one during the sale. I'm gonna skip into foundations now. The one I'm wearing today is my Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. This is the shade 3.5 Ivory Rose. I have used this so many times. I know it doesn't look like I have. I've shaken it up, but I really have. I'm about halfway through this bottle. I don't use it all the time. I have this weird thing where I'm like, I want to use it on special occasions. I don't want to pull it out all the time, but then I realize, use it. You spent all that money on it. Don't let it sit on the shelf. So this foundation is so pricey, so beautiful. It is a healthy, gorgeous, like not matte, not fully luminous, but like a perfect in between, which is what I like. It is. It is a medium to full coverage, very buildable. It doesn't cake up when you build it up. That's my son. This foundation sits so well over my Tatcha Liquid Silk, as you can see right here. I've had this on for the entire day. It is now like almost nine o'clock in the evening. I've gotten the boys bathed and in bed. I, I can't begin to tell you how good it looks in my forehead. This is such a staple in my collection. I just have to have it. It may not be my number one holy grail, but let me tell you, this is flawless. The shades, when you look online, 3.5, you're thinking, oh, that's gonna be deeper than 1.5 cream because my first Tom Ford foundation, the Traceless, Traceless Soft Matte in the um, Squeezy, that one I got in cream and it was too dark. It's a neutral undertone and I was like, it's slightly too dark. I got 3.5 and I was thinking when I was looking at all the swatches, it looks lighter, but shouldn't it be darker? It's actually lighter. So the undertones that were launched after the original line, he kind of just put them into that lineup wherever he could put them. 3.5 is actually lighter in depth than 1.5 cream. This one, I'm actually gonna swatch it. This one here is just the perfect perfect shade. I can't even begin to tell you 
how much I wish every foundation came in this shade. The undertone is perfect for me. It is the absolute perfect pink undertone. This is my winter shade. If I could get this in every foundation, this shade in particular, I'd be set. This thing, if you're my skin tone and like undertone, this is the one you want. This one is perfect. It has SPF 50 in it. I do not use foundation for SPF. I actually put my SPF underneath my foundation. I don't think anyone should be using their makeup for sunscreen. I think you should use sunscreen for sunscreen. I just, that's not a big deal to me. It's whatever skincare products are in this foundation that makes it as pricey as it is. It is my most expensive foundation, but it's not my favorite foundation. It's definitely in the top three though. The second foundation is my literal holy grail, like number one of all number ones, my Chanel number one. <laughs> Literally my Chanel number one. This one is in the shade BR12. I will always repurchase this. Until the day it is no longer made, I will always repurchase this. This is the most fantastic coverage. It gives me a perfect buildable to full coverage that doesn't cake up if I wanna build it up. It is the most luxurious feeling on my face. It feels so soft and lightweight. It is just slightly pink, well, slightly peachier than the Tom Ford. Still a perfect shade for me. There is something about the scent on here that dissipates quickly enough. It doesn't cause me headaches. This foundation is gorgeous. It's not a flat matte. It's not it's not like glowy luminous. This foundation is the one I will always reach for if I know I just, it's gonna be perfect. I don't wanna think about it. I don't wanna worry about my makeup. I don't wanna feel like I have to put in extra effort for my base to look right. This is the one I'll always grab, period, every time. It's my Chanel number one. Like traveling with this versus this, I'll travel with this in a heartbeat. Takes up far less space. I don't have to worry about it nearly as much. I, there's something about the Tom Ford one that freaks me out if I'm gonna throw that in a bag, but that one I could totally do. And like you can, you can tell this one has slightly more warmth to it than the Tom Ford. That's okay, it doesn't bother me. There is something about this finish that is unbeatable. But this next one, this next one, is actually relatively new in my collection. And believe it or not, I did not think that this one was going to surprise me as much as it did. This is the Suku foundation, literally Suku foundation. I got mine in the shade 210. This is the shade I have in the other foundation, the cream foundation. Whoa. I have used this a couple times now. When I tell you this is the closest I have ever gotten to Chanel number no. one. This is the closest foundation I have ever found to Chanel number no. one. The closest. I I was expecting it to be exactly like the cream foundation, the one that I have. Like That is called the cream foundation. This one's called just the foundation. I was expecting it to be just kind of like the same thing, but in a different jar. It's slightly different. It really is. There's something different about this foundation. like the actual ingredients in here that make it look just like the Chanel finish and everything. There's like, it's like magic in a little pot. And I hate opening up the little pot here because it's, I'm not huge on pot foundations, but there is something about this one that just, oh, it's not flat matte, it's not, Oh, you gotta be careful how much you pick up out of here. There is something about this formulation that actually mimics the number one. It's slightly thicker in texture and it is slightly more neutral than the Chanel number one. It's still a cool undertone not as perfect as the Tom Ford, I would say, but it still works really, really well for me. Mm. This is as close as I'm gonna get. It's really hard for me to describe it because I'm not a makeup artist. I just love makeup. But this thing, even though it's not as, like, the viscosity is not as thin as the number one, 
texture wise, the finish of it is, the finish of it is luxurious. It is comfortable on my skin. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing makeup. It doesn't settle in my fine lines. This one sits across my frowny lines even without a primer and doesn't cake up, which is what I always get afraid of. Very, very good foundation and I am so happy I have it. I really, really need Suku to just launch here in America and open up a retailer here in America because everyone should try this foundation. It's so good. I'm gonna give an honorable mention to my Charlotte Tilbury color corrector. I've got one from Bobbi Brown and I've got this one. Color correctors are not something I like to have many of because I don't know, it's just, I don't really care to have a bunch of color correctors to try. This one works. The Bobbi Brown did too. I just, I've been reaching for this one so much. I haven't even reached for the Bobbi Brown in a long time. So honorable mention to my Charlotte Tilbury. Let's get into concealers. Starting off with Giorgio Armani Power Fabric. This is in the shade three. This is the foundation, excuse me, concealer I have used for a long time. I cannot even begin to tell you the first time I got this concealer. This is the one that I based all of the rest off of when I bought them. When I started getting into concealers and looking for something that was not gonna settle into my fine lines, was not gonna make my under eyes look crepey, it was this one. This one is more matte than the Luminous Silk, but it's not a flat matte and it doesn't, it doesn't weigh down my under eyes and make me feel like I'm drooping more than my eyes already do. It's a medium coverage that is buildable, but I don't really build it up just because I'm not big into building up concealers. There's not really, I use concealers to cover, so it should be mil, uh, excuse me, it should be medium to full coverage anyway. This is the shade three. Natasha Denona, this is the High Glam Concealer in the shade R2. I have used this so much recently. I have not been able to just pick up another concealer because this one has been honestly just my favorite for the time being. This is slightly more pink than the Armani, which works out better for me. I just, this one gives me full coverage. The Armani is more of a medium coverage. This one will do anything I need it to do all the time. When I first used it, I wasn't sure I liked it. I felt like it was too drying right away. I felt like I had to work really quickly to blend it out. I just, I learned how to use it. I learned how to work with it. It works with me. I cannot begin to tell you how often I've used it over the last few months. There is just something about this one that doesn't compromise, doesn't budge. It doesn't sink into my fine lines. It doesn't make my eyes feel heavy or tired. And last but not least, this is the Dior Forever Skin Correct in the shade 1CR. This one has a much fatter applicator. I still feel like I get plenty of product on here. I don't think I get too much. This one is my favorite. While I wish that this one had more of a pink undertone like the Natasha Denona, this one is still my favorite. There is something about the creaminess of this concealer that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like my under eyes have like rewound 10 years. I enjoy the formulation of this. I just think that between these two, they kind of like, this one's the best of both worlds. It's medium to full coverage, depending on how you use it. You can build it up if you want to. It is just like, even though it's not the complete undertone that I prefer, like this Natasha Denona, it's got a little bit more luminosity to it when it's when it's blended out. This one I just feel like is the best of both worlds. And I just, I love this one the most. This one just makes me so happy. I feel like I can't go wrong. And if I don't wanna think about my base at all, I'm gonna reach for any of these three. Let's talk about powders, starting off with Huda. This one is the Cherry Blossom Cake. I have so many backups of this. When she first launched it, I wasn't sure this would become permanent or not. I was not about to go empty. This thing, <laughs> this thing is more matte than most powders I have. I always prefer a luminous powder or something that's a little less mattifying. But this one, this one I make an exception for. 
It's so beautiful. It blends, blends, it, it mattifies everything and smooths everything over so perfectly and so effortlessly. This one is just, I don't know how to describe it for a dry skin girl, friendly. It is friendly. It is not one that I feel like it just sucks all the life out of my face. It doesn't make me feel like dry and itchy and flaky. I use this more in the summer than I do the winter. There's something about the scent that while it doesn't irritate me, I wish it wasn't so overpowering, but this thing brightens my, my foundation. I feel like if I overdo it with my foundation, I can use this to tone it down, which is what I prefer. This one is good. Even if you're dry skin, this one is so good. I don't know how to describe it. It works for me as a dry skin girl. The powder I have on today is my Suku Lavender Powder. This one is no longer made. It was a limited edition last spring. I missed out on that one when it launched. When they restocked, I bought it. I should have bought a backup. I don't understand why this one is not permanent in the collection. The Lavender Powder should be permanent for Suku. This is the Oil Rich Glow Loose Powder. The new powder they launched has such a price markup. It's like $72 and this one was $44. So why the price difference? I don't know. I, I just want this one. This is the one I love. It has a luminosity to it that all of the other powders I have don't give me. This one gives me the luminosity that I love. It is so lightweight. I can use it under my eyes. I can use it in my smile lines, my T-zone, my forehead. It doesn't matter. I just... I don't understand why this one isn't the one that's permanent. I've got the other color, the, I think it's the lightest color, but man, there's this one. It's so brightening and luminous. The other one's luminous too, but I just, there's something about brightening that I feel like just makes me feel good and confident. When I look in the mirror, I know that little radiance is coming through. I'm getting it from my powder. I just love this one. It's so lightweight. I can't overdo it. It's a great powder. I'm not gonna purchase the new one until this one is empty. That is my goal. Don't buy it until this is empty because it's basically the cost of two of these. So just depressing. It better be like better than this for the price up. So we'll see. But I hate the idea of not having this one. So, but this is my absolute favorite hands down loose powder. My Christian Dior. Lavender Cushion Powder. I use this almost every single time I do my makeup. There is something about this powder that just makes my under eyes look so perfected. All of these powders I mentioned all do something special. This one in particular, there's not a lot of product in here, especially for the cost, but I love it for my under eyes and my smile lines, mostly just my under eyes. I'm very sparing with it. I just just get the smoothest, softest, like airbrush look for my under eyes. I wish this were refillable. I wish I could pop out the little container, put in a new one because this packaging is gorgeous. I hate just tossing this into a landfill. It's, it's not a good feeling. I just wish that Dior, please, refillable packaging for something like this. But the scent in here doesn't bother me. It dissipates quickly. The only thing that's kind of irking about this powder is the, the the compact itself. Sometimes if you get powder caught in the little, the lip here, when you open it, it just kind of flies away and you know, you're wasting product there, but otherwise it's got a beautiful mirror if you need it. It is probably hands down the only powder I will ever repurchase solely for my under eyes. Like all of the other ones I can use on my under eyes, but I just have to have this for my under eyes. If nothing else, just that. Pressed powders are just a necessity in my collection. I always use a pressed powder to finish off my makeup with. This is the Kogan Doe My Fanchi Powder. Kogan Doe, you guys, there is something about Kogan Doe while overpriced, like all makeup is basically overpriced, let's be honest. You're gonna pay what you wanna pay for it, what you think is worth. I cannot rave about Kogan Doe enough. This powder is just so soft, so blurring. It is subtle, it's, it's brightening. 
I just feel like with this powder, I'm gonna get a brightening matte look. It's not luminous, not this one anyway. This is just a normal powder formulation, but it is silky. It is, it's not a flat powder. It's very silky. This powder just, while I don't like the packaging for $100, this packaging is really cheap. The powder itself speaks for itself. Like the powder is where the money is at. I just genuinely feel like this is such an underrated brand and this powder, I can't find anyone who talks about this powder. This powder is amazing. I love it. I need this powder to just, hmm. I need this powder in different colors and undertones and like to be $30, $40 cheaper and for more people to see this powder and try it and realize how amazing this is. It's like silk, but for your face. You guys know I'm big into luminous powders. This is the Chantecaille. It is the Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. I bought two of these the holiday prior to last. There is something about this powder and I've made a pretty decent dent in it. I'm not sure if you can see it. It is just a luminous finish. It has this, there is no sparkle, there's no shimmer. It is purely luminous. I can use it all over my face. I don't really use it in my T-zone here. I don't, I, uh, it's more luminous than a lot of other finishing powders. So that's why I don't use it in my T-zone, but I just love it all around the perimeter and all over my cheeks. It gives me a healthy, subtle glow. It's expensive. This powder did not get the hype it deserved. The pink one that was launched for Christmas 2023, bleh. It's a good powder, but it has shimmer in it. That is not the type of finishing powder I want. I don't want a finishing powder with shimmer. This one has no shimmer. <laughs> I don't even know if it's in stock anymore. I know it was on sale for a long time. Way too expensive, but dang, this one was worth it. This one was worth it to me because it is hard to find a pressed luminous powder like that just kind of blurs and softens and smooths and gives you a candlelight effect quite like this one. The finishing powder I am wearing today is my Hourglass. This is the ambient lighting power in the shade Ethereal Light. This powder is as close as you're gonna get to that Chantecaille. This one is the perfect shade for me. I have a couple different shades. I love Hourglass powders. They basically are holy grail of holy grail powders. You can never go wrong with Hourglass powders. I cannot begin to describe my love affair with them. This one gives me a very soft, subtle lit from within glow. I can use this one in my T-zone. I can use it under my eyes. I can use it all over my face. It will just kind of buff everything together, smooth it all out, give me that healthy glow that I'm looking for. This baked formulation has not been duped by anyone yet. If there's something close, please tell me in the comments, but this one, I'll repurchase this every time. This is a holy grail for me. I reach for this one so often and I travel with this one the most just because I know if I travel with it, I'm never not going to have a perfect finish because this gives me that. I'm gonna finish this off with setting sprays. I cannot begin to describe when I first started using this years and years and years ago, how much I loved this product. The Urban Decay line, well, they have like really slacked off. This one is still so good. I've only got about half the bottle left because I've, I've just used other products. This thing doesn't go anywhere. There's something about this one that just, I know my makeup's not gonna go everywhere and it's gonna last all day and help increase the longevity of my makeup without thinking about it. And then there is Miss Charlotte Tilbury. Once again, this one is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. While I think it is just as good comparably to the Urban Decay. I would even go as far to say as slightly better. The finish of the two are very similar. This one I just feel like, one I like the Mister a little bit better. This one I just feel like gives me the long, like slightly more longevity. I like that Mister better. There is a very soft scent to this one. It doesn't, it doesn't irritate me but they're very, very similar. And last, but certainly not least, Lisa Eldridge. This is the Seamless Skin Mist, wait, <laughs> Seamless Skin Makeup Mist. Oh my gosh. Metal can. 
already luxurious when you're holding it. It has the perfect mister. It is such a light mist. It doesn't smell, it just feels good on my skin. It's cooling. There's something about this one. I would say that this one probably is the most useful in the middle of my routine, like before I do powder and even after I do powder because it just gives me a little bit more glow back to my skin. Not necessarily for the longevity, but it, it does work for longevity, but this one just, I love the soft finish of this one. That's gonna be it for all of my base and like face mist, like top threes. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I would love to know what your top threes are, especially foundation. Uh, <laughs> the suku was such a surprise for me when I tried it. I was so shocked. I was like, I love it. Um, I just gotta know, tell me what your favorites are. If you enjoyed this video, please comment down below. I have to know if you have anything similar in your top threes that I have. Everything on my face is gonna be linked in the description box down below. If you click on those links, they are affiliated. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Do something for yourself today because you are worth it.